Love is the greatest of all things. Greater than fame, wealth, or knowledge. But, like all things, it can be eroded. James Coombs, shopkeeper. His wife, Evelyn, once there had been love. But now, now there was only rank disaffection. Man can take so much and then no more. I've had words, I've told her, but does she listen? Although anyone who chanced to meet him on that Sunday afternoon might be surprised to learn of it, Coombs was generally a mild and timid man. She's greedy, loquacious, disloyal. All recognition since I married her, calling me names, threatening away all my profits. Oh, bleeding killer, all right. to escape the labours of the workroom, but too stupid to do her share in the shop. I will bleed and kill her. heart. He knew he would never kill his wife, and yet he felt he could endure no more. His Sunday had started off well enough. Must be Jenny and her new chat. You invited Jenny? Yes. Well, you didn't tell me. Didn't I? I thought I did. Jenny. This here's my bow, Mr. Clint. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Coombs. Jim. <laughs> Sleep away these things while I attend to our guests. <laughs> Flaming Jenny coming around whenever she fancies with her gabbling chronicle of fellas and a flaming axe! <clears throat> and I says, isn't that the most divine head? And darling Clint only goes enough to be chasing for me. Oh, how sweet of him. Mm. I know, Jim. Why don't we go out shopping this weekend? Mm. You've already got three hats, Evie. Only one head. Well, a lady's got to look her best. Quite. Little dolly daydream, pride of Idaho, so don't you know? And when Sunday, you go, Sunday. What's wrong with my plan now? 
Careful with that music stool. It's not built for every weight. Don't you worry about weights! Can't people just enjoy themselves? Surely you don't hold with not having a bit of music on a Sunday, Mr Coombs. I do. May I ask for why? Because it don't suit me. I don't mind rational enjoyment at all, but I am not having weekday tunes played on a Sunday in this house. I never saw such a man as you. You've altered all round since we was married. I'm a businessman. I have to study my connection. If you don't mean to study my connection, what do you marry me for? I wonder. You've gone all stiff and starchy. Never mind him. Play on, Jenny. <laughs> Violence now. Who the deuce are you? I am Jenny's intended. I don't care who you are. Jim, you ought to be ashamed of yourself insulting your guests. They're not my guests. Go on, get out. The pair of you. Well, Go on, get out. You do no such thing. You stay just where you are. You are always welcome in this house, Jenny. You too, Clarence. Right. <laughs> All that remained in him now was disappointment and loneliness. Coombs began to realise it was not Everlane's death he craved. <sighs> Serve her right if I kill myself. I'll hang myself. <laughs> Here. Of a tree. He is a bit hasty. All he cares about is that old shop. And if I have any company or get myself anything to keep myself decent, get any little thing I want out of the housekeeping money, there's disagreeable. Well, if a man values a woman, he must be prepared to make sacrifices for her. He was a fool to have him, if you don't mind me saying so. I should have seen it coming, Jenny. If it wasn't for my old father, we shouldn't have had not a carriage to our wedding. No, he didn't stick out at that. For my own part, I wouldn't think of marrying until I was in a position to do the thing in style. Oh, the fuss he makes about money. Always coming to me with sheets of paper and figures, pretty near crying. Always asking me to work in that shop, I ask you. I says to him, 
If you wanted a slavey, why didn't you marry one instead of a respectable girl? He don't deserve you, Evelyn, and that's a fact. He's a little grub of a man. A grub? <laughs> yes, indeed. A grub of a man. Grub of a man. <laughs> What he believed to be poisonous toadstools, James Coombs had elected to leave this world. However, he was completely unprepared for the bizarre and irrational dimensions of the new world he had inadvertently entered. They were not poisonous toadstools. and enjoy themselves. And they were quite right, too. I think up until now, I've been very dull. <laughs> oh, all right. Shall be dull no longer. <laughs> Thank you for the lovely crumpets, Mrs. Coombs. My pleasure. <laughs> Marvellous to have a bit of a sing song, too, ain't it? Delightful. And I'm sorry about the earlier disagreeables. You're a saint for putting up with them, Evie. You know that, don't you? It tries me best. Putting up with the little grub. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clarence. <laughs> He's his lordship. He left a lion. He'll return like a lamb, I'll lay. Just on our way, Mr. Coombs. Thank you for your uh, hospitality. Oh, and, no, uh, surely you're not going. Afraid so, Mr. Coombs. Come along, kids. And, uh, see you again soon, I hope. Oh, oh. I mean. oh. Stay, stay. Sing some more songs here. Have a toadstool. Surely good stuff. Uh. <laughs> Perhaps not. No, my house. Oh, I'm master here. Oh. Do we want Please do. Lovely daydreams, pride of Idaho. Oh, come along now, Mr. Clarence. We must have some merriment. Dance with me. What? Dance with me. <laughs> Listen. No, 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 no. Please, Mr. Coombs, we are both busy men. Too busy for merriment. Too busy. <laughs> That's just a problem. We mustn't be too busy. We must make life as bright and as wonderful as 
as possible! Now come dance with me once more. Dance with me! No! Coon's behavior to be due to an overindulgence in Al. And he did nothing to dissuade her from this belief. Naturally, relations were strained for several days. I don't know what to say. I'm sure I don't. Maybe. Best not say anything. Yet, soon enough, Things return to the old order. However, having tasted heaven, Coombs found it difficult to be content with the old order. Purple, Pilius, season, late spring, habitat, woodland, hallucinogenic. Coombs now realized he had been the victim of an overdose. He believed, with careful calculation, he could determine exactly the correct dose, the dose which would induce within him a gentle intimation of that blissful feeling he so craved to know again. In his dealings with the world, there grew a softness and a kindness in him. One crusty farmhouse loaf. Thank you, Mr. Coombs. <laughs> 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 Inevitably, of course, there was the occasional miscalculation. And he had to weather the consequences. Something smells nice. Just soup.
desire to live in a state of constant bliss. Many a man has tried to create his own wonderland, but few are able to live there forever, because in the end, the barbarians will always arrive.